Yeah, and it's, I'm gonna be so for real, I don't have an easy answer for you. And I, it's like, it is a very frustrating process to try to sort through. My general guidance and wisdom is to just, just pick what your buckets are, right? Right off your gut, just pick them. It doesn't matter how broad or how niche mm -hmm. and live with it for a few months. Try it out, try it on for size. You will know pretty quickly, like, does that fit? Like, is this bucket worded too broad? Are people, do they not care about that thing? Or is it not specific enough for me to know how to post within that bucket? Or is it so niche that I'm like, oh shit, like I only do like one newborn a quarter. That's not gonna work for me. Like, I don't know how to pump that out. And do I even make enough revenue on that for it to be worth, like, you, I think try it on for size and try it on for size for a couple months. And then you tweak and adjust, right? There's nothing to say that you can't change these. You can make them more broad. You can make them more specific. You can throw one out entirely and say, that's not working for me. Let me change it. Generally, I would say keep your, keep everything aligned within those buckets, including stories, including stories. Stories are incredibly powerful in that they're just shorter, faster, easier ways to engage with your audience. But you still do want to think about like, is it aligned to the categories I've picked to drive my business marketing? I love that example. And I'll tell you guys about like why, why do we bucket, right? Why should it be a little more consistent feeling? I literally know when I'm clicking on her story that I'm going to have a good time. Like it's when I'm tired of like my whole feed is wedding shit, right? It's all I am fed all day, every second. And I'm tired of it, right? There's a point where I'm like, ugh, show me anything else. I literally go and look for her story because I know it's going to have cats or Carla telling me a fun story or like anything else. And that's really important. That's again, what builds the trust. It's what builds the relationships and it's what will keep your customers coming back or your warm leads of like, oh, like one of my, one of my buckets is styled shoots, right? People know I literally intentionally post the story when I'm going to a styled shoot that day because I know people are going to come back to my story to see what happened later. And so it's like when people want to look at like what was going on in the world of shoots today, they're coming to my story. Okay. That's where you left off. Someone will tell me when I need to like stop, right? Will you tell me when I need to stop? <laughs> you, you've got a good <laughs> 10 more minutes. I could go on forever. Um, put high quality content out into the world. Okay, so this is what I really did want to spend some time because <laughs> I think this is the thing that people keep kind of leaping over, right? They think if they just check the boxes, like, oh, I took this like three second dark wobbly clip at the style shoot today and so I posted today, check, it needs to be high quality for it to do anything for you. Can you say and that again? <laughs> it needs to be high quality Thank for it to do anything much. for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you, you referenced it earlier, right? If you're just ticking the box, like you might as well not. I'm gonna be so honest with you. And so people say like, I'm doing it, I'm doing the thing and it's not working. And then I go back and I look and I'm like, nobody wants to watch that clip. Did you watch it back on your own? Like, is that something, if you were scrolling, would you stop for that clip? I'm gonna be a little harsh right now, right? Like people are just putting stuff out there into the world because there is some advice that says, just put stuff out there into the world. But like, it's not gonna deliver on anything for you if you're not adding something, right? Like it's gotta be good. And so, Ron uh, ratted out my answer, but the average attention span, right, has shortened. 100%. That's not news to us. It is 100%. now eight yep. seconds getting shorter every second, right? And so it's like eight to seven, what? <laughs> yeah, squirrel. It is <laughs> eight to seven seconds is the average attention span. It is even shorter on social media. The average amount of time that someone is watching anything on social media is two seconds. Gotcha. Two seconds. Crazy. And I, when I hear that, I'm like, oh, like I hate that. The state of the world today is terrible, blah, blah, blah. And then what do I do on TikTok? Boop, 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 boop. I do the same exact thing. And so you need to think about this when you are creating your content. I am not saying run your business in a way that is solely to gain short attention spans. But what I am saying is you do need to be creating content that considers this if you want it to work. Because you could be doing, you could be putting so much time, love, and effort into this like very well thought out, you know, tip of the day or 
story about a styled shoot, and if you don't get to the point fast, no one's watching They're it. gone. They're gone. They're gone. Think about your own content consumption habits, what makes you scroll, what makes you tune in and pay attention. When you are scrolling, this is my challenge to everyone, because we're all doing it. When you are scrolling, what stops you in your tracks, and then 20 seconds later, you are still watching the video. I want you to pay attention to that, because it, it happens to all of us, right? You're, you're on like grocery restock TikTok, and you've been watching someone stock a shelf for three minutes, right? <laughs> and you come up for air, and you're like, what? what am I watching? Why am I watching it, right? There is science behind why you are watching That's that. That's true. There's That's something true. about you that made you want to continue consuming that thing. And so think about your own habits and why you watch things longer or shorter. And that is exactly what you're going to do with your clients. You're going to think, my target audience, why would they keep watching that clip? And when you are about to put something out into the world, watch it back yourself for a second. Like, watch it back and be like, Am I bored in two seconds? If you're bored of your own clip in two seconds, no one else is gonna care. But don't be too hard on yourself because you'll true. deter yourself from even posting it. That's true. So you're like, there's do a it, fine do line. It. Yeah. There's a fine line. There's a fine line. But it doesn't have to be super complicated, right? People will talk to you about hooks and this and that. If, if you start off with a high quality clip that is well lit, you can clearly see everything. If there's no annoying noise, you'll probably watch another second. If in the next second there's something really pretty to look at, you'll probably watch one more second. Then if there's like a story that's starting to happen, you probably watch another second. And so it, it builds, it doesn't have to be like super complex and crazy in the first second. Um, create selfless content. This is probably the most important thing on this slide. Your content needs to be for your clients. Your content is not for you. Say that again. Your content is for your clients. Your content is not for you. Like it, hate it, it is what it is. If you're a business, your content has a purpose, right? There are a lot of people who put out the content they're excited to share, right? And that content is selfishly motivated. And what I mean by that is it's not at all thinking about what your client cares about. And there's a, there's a lot of really good discourse going on about this on TikTok right now, specifically with wedding media. You know, there's a, there's a lot of content like, you know, photographers are trying to educate their clients on like how much it costs to run their business, right? Because of that myth of the wedding gap. And the way they're trying to educate their clients is like, but look, like I have to spend $200 on LLC fees and I've just spent this much on insurance and my lens, do you know how much my lens costs? It costs $6,000. Your client doesn't give they a shit. They don't care. They do not care. That is a selfish content clip. That makes you feel better. That does nothing for your clients or anybody else. Hate it, like it, it is what it is. And then storytelling. Storytelling wins over sales content every time. Gen Z especially does not like being sold to, and they have a really good nose for when you're trying to sell them something. They have been born into a, I mean, think about a, a generation that gets marketed to every second that they are breathing, right? Influencer content is in their face all day. Commercials, this, that, it's everywhere, more so than ever. They can snuff out a sales pitch from a mile away, stop selling. Stop selling. The way that you're gonna sell is by building trust and relationships with your clients. And so, like, this is a really hard thing to kind of grasp your head around, right? Like, how do, what do you mean stop selling? How do I stop selling? You need to kind of look at all your content messaging and think about it through the lens of like, if I walked into like a car dealership, right? Like, does this sound like a pitch? Does this sound like they're just desperate for me to buy the car? They just want to make the sale so bad. And so Gen Z will snuff that out so fast. People don't like being sold to. Okay, clickies. Thanks, Ron. My pleasure. Finally, I knew I was going to talk too much and I uh, saw the future. Content workflows. So that was all big, broad stuff. I want to give you a few practical takeaways or like what was all this for? One of the hardest things to learn, I think, as a small business in creating content is a workflow that will continuously crank out content for you. 
this takes time, this takes practice, try stuff on for size. But there are four steps you wanna think about and I want you guys all to think about, am I doing this? How am I doing this? Is this something that's gonna like continuously work for me? I have to structure my workflow for an absolutely chaotic ADHD brain, right? That's how I have to, and I'm sure it's like common in entrepreneurs, right? That we think a certain way. So I want you to think about those things when you're batching your content. So step one, batch capture videos. This can mean anything at any scale. Batch capture can mean I'm gonna set an alarm on my phone for the five minutes before cocktail hour at every wedding. And I'm gonna take content for five minutes. It could mean I'm gonna take one day a week and I'm gonna, set a, I'm gonna put one hour on my calendar and I'm gonna batch content for that one hour. It could be on any scale, it could be at any level, it could be I'm hiring a content creator for my five biggest weddings this year and I'm gonna get 800 clips a wedding. So batch your content capture, go into it with a light shot list, That's <clears throat> that can help a lot, right? If you say, hey, I really wanna get, one of my content buckets is wedding ideas. Every wedding, five minutes before the wedding, I'm gonna get my favorite three details at that wedding. And I'm gonna batch it. So think about it in light of your, your buckets and that gives you a little more direction to go in. Organize your videos. So this gets down to that like tricky file management problem. This can look like a million different things for every business owner. Some wedding planners I work with just have a categorized album in their phone, right? Each wedding they do before they get there, they literally make a shared album, they title it with the wedding, the date, they invite all their assistants, and if they're friends with a the photographer, they're inviting their photographer, and then everybody uploads all the stuff they got on their phone all day into that shared album. Now what you've done is you've created almost like a mini content bank for that whole team that worked on that wedding, and when you're ready to pick it up, it will be there for you, right? And so you're gonna be in your editing hole for three weeks, you're gonna come up for air, and then you can go back to that album and be like, oh my God, I didn't even realize we got that clip. I have the perfect photo to go with that clip. Great, I'm gonna add it to my content calendar. But this is gonna take a few tries, and this is a frustrating process, right? Every, every person is different, but you need to set yourself up for success there. If you are going through like, hordes of galleries and hordes of clips on your phone like meshed in with your cat and your toddler like it's going to be a frustrating experience every time you go to create content um edit and post is a whole nother bucket so after you've thought about the videos and you've captured them and you've organized them you want to actually think like okay how am i going to consistently edit these things and how am i going to consistently post do not listen again to that advice. It's like, oh, post at 7 a.m. Oh, yeah. on Thursdays only. And blah, blah, blah. just find something that works for your business and works for you as a human. I have literally seen people set alarms on their phone. Yep. that's like, got to post today. And like, if that works for you, great. Um, but if it doesn't work for you, like that's not a hard and fast rule. So find a schedule that works. Engage and analyze is like your final step. I see so many people post an awesome something. It's usually like a photo or a little video clip or a reel. And they're getting all these likes and comments and they're not answering any of them. They're like too cool to engage. Like, I don't, I don't get it. The algorithm reward, this is like a known fact. The algorithm rewards accounts that are engaging with their audience. Interaction, yep. And man, like what a way to build trust again. It doesn't matter if you don't know that person who just commented. It doesn't matter if they like said something weird, like any engagement or response to that is a solid thing to do for your business. And then analyze after the fact, how'd that clip do? And again, like do that on a cadence. I literally like loop it back. And so before I go to start my next round of content, I read all the analytics for the content I just did last month, what performed really well, what didn't do so well. Okay, great. Now I have like some learned adaptations I can take. Are you guys falling asleep? Are you bored? Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm off duty. God, Ron. What is it? Uh, content capture hacks. Again, really practical advice. 
we do what they need. So when you go to set your alarm for your five minutes before cocktail hour or after you just drop your flowers on all the tables or whatever it is, during your couple's engagement session, I've got a wedding. These are three things that you can do with your phone that will always benefit you. And it sounds so silly. You're like, duh, of course. But when you're like in the moment, right? All the things that we do as wedding vendors is like really high emotion, really fun, exciting, chaotic. There's so much going on. It's really easy to forget these kind of core tenants. And so you want to think about strategic movement, right? The reason short form video works as a marketing tool is that people love movement. And so you want to be thoughtful about that. General rule of thumb, if your object is static, staying still, you want to create movement with your phone. If your object is moving, you either want to stand still or you want to move with it. That is just like a general mm -hmm. that works really well on the phone. Um, but you do want to think about it. Slow, steady pans. That is like, I could get that tattooed on my arm. Slow, steady pans. Works every time. You could see all these videos with all these fun tricks and people are flipping the phones and doing the transition and it literally doesn't matter. If you, if you truly just stand there, Slow, steady pan. Next clip, slow, steady pan. Keep your arms into your body. <laughs> like, watch your arms and legs inside the vehicle. The closer your phone is to your body, the steadier the clip will be. Do I have my phone in my pocket? And so, what I see a lot at weddings, and this is, I'm not attacking anyone, but I'll see a lot of this. <laughs> Guaranteed, that is gonna look really bad. I'm scrolling and I'm immediately nauseous, I'm seasick, I can't tell what's going on, over it, next. There is also, I like hate to say this, but there is an assumption about somebody's age based on the clip that was captured. <laughs> I'm just, and, and people will immediately disassociate. They're like, ah, oh, boomer clip, next. I'm not saying it's right, I'm, but it is true. It is 100% true and you wanna find a way to combat that. And so the slower, steadier pans will get you better results every time. This is my rule, I always say 10, 15. 10 to 15 second clips, try to get 10 to 15 clips at whatever it is you're doing. And you can absolutely make a reel out of that that'll literally probably absolutely. give you almost a month of content. And so 10 to 15 second clips, 10 to 15 clips, and you're gold. Um, I always say record a little longer than feels comfortable to. Um, we all kind of have this like, it's like, oh, it's so embarrassing. Like I'm doing content. There's like an age differential there, right? Think about like the food bloggers. Think about like the kids, you know, at, on the corner with their friends. Like they are shamelessly using their phones. You want to channel that a little bit because you have to, right? Shamelessly use your phone. Don't be embarrassed about it. Keep recording as long as you can and a little bit beyond even what feels comfortable. Cookies. Thanks, Your Mom. business is relying on that. Yeah. So say you're doing throw it out, newborn photography. <clears throat> you pan your room, your setups, your setups. Do you set, do a selfie? Because when I watch videos, like they're, they, they're showing how they're wrapping or like do you stick yourself in there? It depends. I think it's whatever makes you feel most comfortable, honestly, because I see a lot of people, like I actually don't show my face all that much on my own account. Um, I don't do my makeup at home a lot. I usually look like a hot mess when I'm working. I get really focused, I get really hot, my cheeks get red. I don't love the way I look in those moments and I don't really wanna show it. I don't really have to for the content to be good engagement. Like they don't really, my clients don't really care how I look. Yeah. <laughs> and how, so how? I think it's totally up to you. I think like the guidance of show your face I is. Maybe it probably depends on. Depends on why. Babies versus <laughs> weddings versus yeah. seniors. Well, right? it depends on why, look, right? Look at it this way. Is it yeah. necessary to show your face? We're going to use Haley's bun in her hair right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Haley, don't move. This is the baby. I'm doing a newborn. I've got a cell phone on my hand. The mom's right there, baby's sleeping. We got them in what we want. When she talks about panning, 
you'll, if you watch other, especially cinematographic people and the videographers, they have this whole panning movement where they do stuff like this and it's all nothing herky jerky. It's just all like that slow movement. So I would do something like this, past her head like that, getting a shot like that, and then off. Then I would do something with your light coming over here and then go back to the head. From there, take that clip and that clip. At the end, you take your finished edited image, you put one clip, two clip, boom, your edited shot at the end, that's all you need. Yeah, Faces no. are not necessary. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it'd be cool if the mom was there, but yeah. when you're talking about social media, two or three clips of 10 to 15 seconds, I always did three to seven, I'm gonna change that, and just doing the clips that you want, at the end, show that edited image, and people will wait to see what's going to be happening as long as it's not 60 seconds later. Because you got your 10 second video. Yeah. It's just nice and simple. Thank you, Haley, for letting me use your hair. Um, and it's just I, simple. I think what I could imagine in that situation, and so people say, show your face, show your face, show your face. And the reason they say that, I heard well, Catherine I say it. I think I want to show my face. I was just thinking when I watched clips, they're like showing how they're rapping, but, but maybe it is somebody videotaping yep. them. them. So I didn't know. Was it that could be a tripod too. Yeah. That's what a good point. I, I sweated to death on the first one, so I don't want people seeing, so seeing it. So then don't. What I can don't. imagine works, and this is just me ad living. If I'm a client and I'm looking at newborn photographers, and I don't know anything from Adam, what do I probably care the most about? The baby. The baby. Yeah. And so what I want to know is how is this person going to handle my child? Can I trust this person photographing my child, Good right? Point. And so what they want to see is they don't really care like what's going on with your face. They care about how you're interacting with their baby. Yeah. And so however you can show, right? I, I can almost imagine the psychology behind the time and care that people are putting into their newborn setups illustrates the time and care you put into the way you'll engage with their child, they are able to make that leap okay. because they, they do it themselves, right? They're like, oh, I dawdle over my kid's clothes because I want it to be perfect and I, you know, I do all these things. And when they say you do that as a photographer, that's the thing that matters. Okay. They don't really care. You know, it's not about your hair and makeup that day. Yeah, yeah. Is Good that point. helpful? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, gear. We don't need to talk so much about this. I'm going to send all this stuff out and I'll give you guys a list. But I would recommend my overall push is that any small business can make a very nominal investment in content creation gear mm -hmm. that will make your life way easier and way better when it comes to this like extra full-time job that we all now have as content creators, right? And so here are some ideas, like Catherine had mentioned, maybe that was a tripod, right? Maybe that person didn't even have someone in the studio filming with them, but they have this fun little nifty phone tripod that weighs five pounds and they keep it in the studio. Um, maybe that wasn't a, like, maybe they didn't need to splurge on a professional videographer. They actually just upgraded to a gimbal and actually like the phone gets pretty smooth content now. Um, light, right? When we talk about quality, the challenge with phones is that they notoriously struggle with lighting, <laughs> right? And so you're probably getting aggressively marketed to Alex Earl light. It does work, it is legit, try it. <laughs> it um, upgrades literally every clip. Um, and then the other two things I would love you all to take away. Absolutely. Every time you take your phone out of your pocket at the beginning of a wedding or setup or photo shoot, please wipe, wipe your Clean lens Clean the wipe. lens! We are, I mean, think of all the shit this <laughs> thing goes through, right? You're sitting on the bathroom counter, you're washing dishes and then you're touching the phone. It's going in your purse, it's going in your car, it's falling underneath your car seat. Every single time I look at this, it's filthy. And it literally just knocks your clip down a million pegs when it just looks foggy and hazy. People are like, oh, my phone content quality is not good. And I'm looking at their lenses and it's just that their lens is filthy. There's nothing wrong with the phone camera itself. These are like eight bucks on Amazon. Buy a box, keep a few in your gear bag or in your studio, wherever you are. And every time you're about to shoot content, make that part of your habit. What kind of phone do you use? Just I have a 15 Pro Max. That's on purpose. That's on purpose. That's on purpose. Um, I actually prefer the 14 Pro, which Katie has. Who, who makes that? They're, uh, they're both iPhones. 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 Yeah. IPhones. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, and then CapCut is my favorite editing tool for social media content. There's a lot of different editing tools out there. 
if you're trying to edit your reels in Instagram or TikTok or whatever the native app is, my condolences, it is the most frustrating experience of all time. Mm -hmm. It is classically glitchy, it's annoying, it's not very user friendly. I find most people are able to engage with CapCut, it's free, so much easier. And so you can basically dump all your clips in here, edit them how you want, take that finished edit and put it back into whatever you're gonna upload it in. I guarantee you it will be a less frustrating experience. Good point. There's a learning curve, but I would say try it. Okay, clickies, what else do I have? Oh my God. Okay, most important takeaways, we could skip it, it's okay. Um, we were gonna do some hands-on training, but do we have time yeah. for that? It's yeah, like, we, we do? Okay. Yep. Do so, you wanna do questions and answers first? Yeah, let's, let's do- If we do... can limit the questions and answers, we should be able to get to the- Yeah. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's, um... What about the non-iPhone people in the room? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Ron, I have Androids Ron, also, Ron and has it can Android. be done. It can be done. Yeah. It can be done. I know. I'm so sorry. So I will literally, this is my goal is this year I'm trying to adapt my business to be more Android friendly because you guys also deserve bomb ass content. And so I'm working on it. It's just, it's the same concepts, just different, right? Android has an excellent camera. Yep. Or maybe arguably better, right? There is no reason that it can't make you great content. Yep. I just am. They don't communicate well. They don't communicate well. Yeah. 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 I, trust me. And everyone's like, you made it green or blue or whatever. The whatever that. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. So this is heavily. This is heavily. This is an iPhone setting screen. This is all settings geared towards iPhone. I am working on it. That's okay. Yep. I'll send it Does to that you. mean all the clips I've sent you, you've not been able to use in those Dropbox? <laughs> oh, okay. We got to figure it out. Ron can't open my Dropbox clips. Okay. I also have Dropbox though too. And oh, I have it might yeah. be auto. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So this is the question I get asked at every single style shoot. Someone will be standing next to me and they're like, why doesn't my clip that I just took look like yours? I have spent a lot of time experimenting every content creator will give you a different secret True. sauce for their settings. This is just like any other media. Through time, this is what I have found works best for me. I am giving away the secret sauce of my own settings there for you to use and enjoy. We appreciate that. But I do recommend spend some time there, right? Everyone has preferences. The same way a photographer would have preferences, the same way a videographer would have preferences for their settings and the way you like your content. Change it, take a clip, change it again, and see what you like, what you vibe with, what you don't vibe with. The one thing I will say, I think is a non-negotiable, most social media platforms do not like the HDR setting that Apple has as a default on their cameras. It will almost always make your clips look blur blurrier than they are. I'm not gonna get into the tech of it, I don't understand it. It's something about the way the colors and the information is compressing. I was like livid, right? It looked great on my phone. I'd upload it. It looked like absolute, you know what? This is usually the culprit. And so when most people say to me, why does it look bad when I upload it? It's usually this. So t I would recommend always turning your HDR off. Um, these two things I have a love-hate relationship with. Um, I go back and forth on them all the time. And sometimes I switch them depending on what I'm shooting. But just know it does make the video behave differently and it does make photos behave differently. Um, 4K 60 FPS is what I typically shoot everything on. Um, that is because I like to slow down clips a lot and I find that 60 FPS on the phone just like does better for putting things in slow-mo. It makes it smoother when you slow it down. When you slow down a clip on a phone, it makes it look smoother, right? Your little handshakes are not as noticeable. And so that's why I choose to do that. A lot of people choose to do 30 FPS because it makes it a little smoother. Play Don't around Don't be overwhelmed it. by all these numbers. Yeah. Don't be overwhelmed. But it does, it does make a big difference. And so just play, just play with it. Um, check your format. I see people making this mistake a lot. So, and I know this is hard to read. In your camera settings, there is an option that says format. Each different version of iPhone will have a, a different amount of options in here, but there is a high efficiency setting and there is a most compatible setting. High efficiency is compressing your photos and videos and they will not look good on socials. 
choose most compatible. If, if you're not like dying for storage, which you might be, try to shoot on most compatible all the time. You can always convert those clips back and forth. You can, so even if you shot everything on high efficiency, you can switch it to most compatible, but you gotta move it to your own laptop. You gotta save it differently as a JPEG. You gotta put it back. Um, so I see that being done a lot. A lot of people don't know now there's a grid and level on the iPhone camera, which helps a ton. Um, okay, those are my settings. Cookies. Okay, before we get to the tactical stuff, I was gonna teach you guys three fun, like shooting tricks and tools if you don't already know them, which you might. Um, let's do Q&A. We Perfect. answered a lot of questions, I think, during. We did. Is there anything pressing where everybody fe anybody feels like they needed to have any other questions? Yes, Haley. Um, so I'm a venue coordinator for a specific venue, but my main focus is weddings and private events, but we also do a lot of festivals and concerts and things like that. So mm -hmm. this is not wedding season in the winter. We're doing a lot of indoor concerts. So I feel like our social media right now is a lot of posts on that, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a different demographic and audience than what I want. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, should I split into a separate whole social media account just for weddings? Oof. This is always tough. And people ask this a lot when they do different categories of photography. And I think what you, you want to think about the target client. Yeah. If, if you're in wedding booking season right now and they're looking at your Instagram and all they're seeing is concerts, yeah. what is that going to do? Right? They're like, that's not the venue for me. All I see are concerts. I don't see me in that page. I don't see me in that venue. And so if you think that it's going to be a hindrance to you, like some of your business goals, sometimes it can be advantageous to kind of split it up or just market it less. Like you can choose how aggressively you want to push out different content from what you're doing. I was shooting vendor content for an entire year before I was aggressively posting it. And that was on purpose, right? It was like, I'm doing this thing, but I don't really want people to know I'm doing this thing yet because I'm not ready to sell it. And so I, I strategically waited. I think if, if you guys like want to actively market and sell both, and you have two completely different audiences that respond to two completely different yeah. kinds of content, like you might want to think about splitting that up. But then that's tough, right? Now you're managing two accounts. And so a way I've seen a lot of people do it, I think very effectively, is by targeting the grid to the like highest revenue thing that you want to push the most, right? And so if, uh, again, I don't, I'm, I don't have an MBA, but if the highest revenue comes from weddings, mm -hmm. you probably should focus most of your grid on weddings. Do stories highlights for everything else for in concerts. categories. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But if, if it's like, oh no, we actually aggressively need to market to these two completely different audiences. And I can't think of two audiences who could be more different, right? Like it, it might be advantageous to split it up. Is it possible to do two accounts, Westfield River Brewery Weddings, Instagram, Westfield River Brewer Concerts. I wonder if that's a possibility. Uh, you might have to have two different admins, two different emails, kind of thing like that. But that's hard because you guys are selling the venue as a wedding venue. He fills in all the other stuff with the concert. Sergio did a great job renovating that place over there. So that's a good point. You might have to kind of experiment almost. Yeah. It's hard because I'm Sergio's business partner. Also has access to the social media. So he's the one posting all the concerts. Oh, okay. And, and I help with that stuff too, but my focus is mainly wedding. So I can't really tell him. Like, did they like the pictures? Oh yeah. Good. <laughs> You're off the hook. Yes, Jeff. I have like eight Instagram accounts, so oh. they are niche down. Oh, that's okay. I have a real estate one. Uh -huh. I mean, I can choose on my account to post yeah. on my real estate. So that might be something to look into. Post real estate stuff, because I know the people that are following it is just agents. That's yeah. a good point. So within that, when I post, I know I can choose whether or not I can post to my main rock star or my other one. There's toggles. Where it can post, ah, it can post to both okay. Mm -hmm. And you can choose whether or not if you want it on one or all of them and just have it, you know, you could do nine. You could do like, you can focus on your grid. You know, and you only need two. You know, so Realistically, yeah. concerts, 
weddings. That's not, that would be manageable because it's not what you want to start. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right, so that's that's, that was a good question. I'm glad, that, I'm glad you asked that because that's kind of... I didn't even know it was. Very, now, <laughs> let me address this real quick. Marissa over here does bridal corner. So she, that's her dress over there in the corner. So she does different things with prom season and wedding season. So weddings, you can get dresses all the time. Mother-in-law dresses, mother of the bride's dresses and things like that. Do you do all of that under the same brand and account of Bridal Corner? Do you feel, do you, you, do you feel you, like you still get good traffic from, if you're, now it's prom season, do you still get inquiries for dresses? Yes. For weddings? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So well, I guess it. Is our bridal because that's what we sell the most yeah. of and that's where we profit the most. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, leading up to prom season, we'll start yeah. throwing in more prom stuff. We even have models come in that are my daughter's friends. Yeah. And they put the dresses on so then people their age can relate. Yeah. It's not us yeah. putting a prom dress on. They're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, um, and your social media, seriously, I'm going to say this publicly and out loud, your social media these past couple of months have been seriously, and I know who it is, I'm saying, but, I, but I'm saying that to you as the business, as the business owner, it, in, in, the, in that one time, in that short period amount of time, it has leveled up. She, she calls me, Marissa, crushing it. Marissa sends me a text. Marissa sends me a text. Hey, what kind of loom, what kind of ring light do you use? I pull over. I go knocking on the door. She's like, I just texted you. I was like, I was just driving by Memorial Drive. And I come in and said, okay, this is what I got. I got the night, which is right back. There. This is what I got. This is what you need to get. Tell you what, borrow mine for two weeks. You like it. Now you know what you need to buy. Is it working out for you? You're welcome. So any other questions? Somebody else had another question? Yeah. What do you call these like little highlights? Those are story highlights. So I kind of mm -hmm. feel like that kind of thing might be very helpful when people do a lot of different types of yes. niches because they could literally on one type of media, they could just say, hey, by the way, I do these other things. Can you explain what these kids? Yeah. So what else do you do other than boudoir? Um, empowerment, more branding. Do you have separate pages for separate things or do you all I under the same account? Of course family and advertising from boudoir. Okay, boudoir, okay. Empowerment are all together. Okay, and that's probably good to separate those. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll I'm, just, I'm just stating yeah. the obvious, yeah. but that's what, that's, that's what people are into. I asked, asked I wanted to, want to say out loud what you did so she knew right, how yeah. to answer your question. But specifically speaking of the highlights under my boudoir Instagram, I've also spoken about maternity and couples yep. and some other categories that I do that aren't necessarily boudoir but also speak to the breadth of things that I mm -hmm. cover. Yeah. People go, oh yeah, she's also done this. Or yeah, got about it. Or that's something that she's Good, done. okay. Yes, so what she's asking about are story highlights. What you guys wanna do, you really wanna think about making the landing page of your Instagram work for you and your business goals. The days of the like perfectly curated grid are dead, but also you can't have a crazy chaotic Good grid point. and page. And so you want to be shooting somewhere in the middle. You want to think about everything on that Instagram page strategically. And this also goes for TikTok. This goes for any other platform, but Instagram specifically, the story highlights are those little bubbles, right? That sit between the about you and the grid. You want to be using those strategically in whatever way makes the most sense for your business. So this could be a really easy way to show categories of things you want to market, but that you don't want your grid to be like taken over by. And so you could use it for, hey, this is where we're going to post our special events or our drink special tonight or the opener for the concert tonight, right? Like we're going to post that in this stories highlight. You post it on your stories, you can save them in your highlights through time as a category. I use it for FAQs, right? I do an ask me anything every so often. People submit questions. I save all of those to a specific story highlight. So as soon as you hit my page, oh, she's got FAQs. She's got, you know, about us. She has about the team. And so you want to think about using those strategically. I've seen people use them in super creative ways. Um, if you want to work at a specific venue, 
next year, right? Make a story highlight for that venue, get yourself to that venue, share work from that venue, put it all in that story highlight. So as soon as somebody hits your page, they're seeing that thing called out. And so you wanna be strategic about that. Good point. All right, do you wanna go into the, going into the phone training thing? Somebody I mean, had a question about it. the, how in an iPhone, how do you shut the HDR off? So you wanna go into your settings? I, w I would recommend it. Um, I would recommend pretty much always having it off because no matter where you share it, most social media platforms do not like HDR. High definition, Jeff, help me. High dynamic range. High dynamic range. Thank you, Jeff. And sandwich is going to make the one. The middle okay. and the highs, and it makes the best of the, it gets the shadows, yeah. the highlights all in one. But it's you sacrificing the quality. Large file also, it's correct? Not, yeah, but it's very compressed. Compressed. So when I shoot real estate, they're higher because I edit them by hand. By your phone, it's it's kind of yes, awesome. correct. That is why the sunset looks better sometimes. That's why it sometimes looks better on your phone. Correct. Before correct. The camera gets <laughs> Good point. Which drives me bonkers. Yeah, yeah, me too. How do I, I didn't know that? Uh, in your camera settings. So what do you want to do with the, do you want me to turn some lights on and shut this down? I mean, if you, if you guys want it, I think it's like what Does everybody. Does anybody need it? Does any, would anybody like her to address? I feel like yes, but I don't want to be the, the only person that feels like yes. So there's basically, there's three things, and I'm sorry, Androids. There are three things that I wanted you to know that your phone can do when you are recording video if you don't already. So look. One of them is how to adjust the exposure. Gear like that. When you're capturing video yeah, or photo, it's more HDR, it's the other was how to lock on to an object. And so, like, yeah. something that people complain about a lot to me when they're shooting so with their phone is the white right. balance changed and the whole thing washed out while I was at. filming it, or the focus went totally haywire, you, right? You, you know There's a way is? to lock on um, to a subject, and I don't know the technical term, so if, camera? if you guys know better than me, tell me, but camera, yep. there's a way to lock on so that it won't See adjust any of those settings really while you're filming. Um, so and then what was the other one? Zooming do this. on yeah. your phone. Now it tells you what's straight. So, so does anybody want to play with any of that? That's or do you guys want to keep okay. doing Q&A? Okay. That's all. I, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big TikTok yeah. fan at all. And, and I, I'm watching, listen, if you guys don't know who Steve Grindle and Jay Cody is in the back over there, his <laughs> TikTok is like, it's fire. It's like, <laughs> it's crazy, crazy, crazy good with what he did. And they're getting interactions with their TikTok. So I started doing this um, three weeks ago now, I started doing this wedding tip Wednesday. So I did it in my Instagram. My wife had to show me this. So I did the video clip and I had to go and I didn't know how to create the captions where it literally starts saying all the letters for you and the words for you. So once I did that, I saved it. And I was like, you I'm just gonna see what it looks like on TikTok. I'm like, oh, I haven't posted anything. And it got almost 1500 views in 24 hours because it's just a wedding tip Wednesday, so it wasn't very long, but it was very, it's, it's part of that, it's, it's where they are. It's where the people, if you go fishing, are, do you want to throw the bait in where the fish are, <laughs> or do you want to throw it up on the land? <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I want my business to grow. If I don't start to throw that out there and at least make an, somewhat of an effort, I can never say, well, it didn't work for me. I'm at fault because I never even tried. So that's on me. So I just started in the past, you know, four or five months, just started to do my Instagram as my primary, my f Facebook as my secondary. So I do those together, but I also do LinkedIn and you everything else. But I just started to cut, take that same video, saved it with all the, the uh, talking on it and all the words on it. Then I put it on the TikTok and it seems like it's being doing okay. It's a necessary evil. If you don't do it in five years, I'm telling you, in five, four years from now, where are we going to be? I was being generous with three to seven seconds. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's two. That's, agree with it or not, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I think it's, I'm old school and that's it. But I have no choice. If I want my business to grow, I have to adapt and pivot. Any other questions? Anybody have them want to look at their phone? You guys want to listen, look at your phone and see if you could look at your settings? Does anybody, does anybody, everybody understand what panning is? <laughs> no, and I'm being, I'm being, if you walk out of here not knowing something, it's not because 
This is your opportunity <laughs> to ask. Liz did it. It's just holding your it's, phone like this. Yeah. It's just doing those mo movements like this. And what I'll do is I'll, when I do the wedding cake, I'll go up like this <laughs> and I'll come from the floor and I'll start right about here. I'll go right up to the cake and then come back just like that. And then I take a picture after that. Um, same thing with painting. You can come down from the sky and you can come down this way here. I go all the way in on my, um, the, the bride's uh, ring and then I'll slowly come back out until it comes into focus and then I'll get a shot like that where, that's all painting is. It's just slow movement. I'm not going to call anybody out because he's not in this room, but he's like a herky jerky, you know, you know, one of these things like yep. this and you know, there's no transitions, but he's learning all of that process, but he's making an effort. I'd rather see yes. a clip that is not so polished than no clip at all. Cause he's at least making an effort. Yes. Liz, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, do you, when you, get hired by your clients, do you photo or video everything with, from the iPhone camera? Do you use a special app? So right now I do everything on the native camera. Okay. I have been testing various different apps through time. Um, and I, because the intended audience and use is someone who's just gonna take that clip and throw it up on socials or send it to their family, like I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. There are a ton of different apps that can manipulate the native camera a million different ways depending on what you wanna do. It just depends on how much time you wanna spend. Um, I've been toying with Filmic Pro, which allows you to basically shoot like if you were using a, a real camera um, and it's super complex. You can do LUTs, you can do all kinds of stuff. I don't need all that, my clients don't really need all that. I'm not trying to be a videographer, right? And so that's. But there are apps that can really, I mean, they just filmed an Olivia Rodrigo music video on an iPhone, right? The way that's possible yeah. is because of all these other ancillary apps that kind of hack the native mm -hmm. camera. Um, my favorite right now is called Flow, P-H-L-O-W. Um, it is absolutely incredible in terms of um, almost like, I don't know the technical term, no one make fun of me, but it almost color grades as you're shooting and it has various presets. And so it's almost like, you know how you can put a filter on after yeah. that will change the tone, change the color, the way it looks. This allows you to shoot in that. And so you can see how it looks and it, it's like, it is paid, it's a paid app, but I absolutely am obsessed with it. For all of my editing, for everything I use CapCut. Mm -hmm. Even your own personal stuff? Yes. Yeah. It, it is like, to, to me it has been, and I've tried a, a bunch, um, I feel like it has the most user-friendly mobile experience. I actually don't love the desktop version of CapCut. I'm like really struggling with the learning curve of one to the other. I was just gonna ask whether you're, you're doing more of that on your phone versus like putting everything on your laptop and doing it. I pretty much do everything on my phone with the exception of my file transfers just because it's so much, much. information, right? There's a reason why like videographers won't send everyone raw footage, right? It's, sure. it's like so insane. Yeah. Um, and so that's the only thing right now that I'm doing on my desktop. Everything else I do on my phone. So all my editing, even like most of my, once I'm pulling clips from my like storage organization, I'm pulling it all onto my phone to edit there which may or may not be good, I don't know. If it works for if you. If it works, it works. Whatever works. Whatever. And that's what we want. When her and I had this conversation, <laughs> we, I, I knew there was a need for this in Massachusetts. There's, there's just this missing link here in Massachusetts that the, we just really need to step up. What I love about what she just did in this one hour, this, information can be applied to I don't care what business you have. It doesn't matter as a professional photographer, as a professional videographer, as a bridal store, you could be making cookies, you can be shoveling manure. It don't matter what it is. When you apply all of this stuff and you post it, the, the views and the follows are the gold and that's when people are going to follow you then it's like the jab jab right hook fit mentality you show a few things show a few things show a few, and then hit them with a sale ron lemelin photography you're looking for a photographer x here you go and then it's you know wedding tip wednesday and it's something else and something else it works and if you don't do it 
It's on you. There's nothing else we can do about that. I don't want, I want to see you guys thrive. I want to see you guys grow. Uh, I want to see Western Massachusetts kind of step up to the game. Uh, Lisa has a bridal show coming up in November. And one of the things that her lacking point is, is the photographers are in the room. We can't walk around and take pictures of the event because we're all standing in our booth waiting for the brides to come by. So she's talking to Liz. Hey, Liz, what would you think about coming to our next bridal show and doing that, doing all of that, turn the clips over. Now she has clips to show seven people standing at Ron Lemelin Photography's booth and I got a behind the scenes video clip of her walking by and I'm talking to five or six different people. So we've tried to do a lot of photography at the day of the show. Yep. And like he shot this last time because she was new at the show and yep. she had lots of great stuff from her, some great yep. content. And then my son was shooting also, yep. and so I get all these files afterwards, and I go, wow, okay, you know. Like but now we what? we don't have a lot of We don't. Work. Yeah. We really don't, and, you know, I think that we're going to need to step that portion up and, you know, maybe do testimonials or yep. do some other type of, you know, this is the reason to come to a show. Yeah. To see the whole display. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. You and movement. That ex- you can't That's what that draws attention. You can online. You no. can see the pictures. Yeah. Well, they look pretty, but. Yeah. To talk to her and maybe get something personally made mm-hmm. is yeah. important. To talk yeah. to you and get your yeah. get your whole. This is what my vision is for my wedding. If yeah. you don't, that doesn't show up all the time. Remember yeah. the days when Instagram was photos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. If we any of us go to our Instagram, how much of it is a still image? It's ninety percent. I'm going to say even ninety five percent video. And that's what the platform is gravitating to. TikTok, same thing. So if we don't have video clips to post, like I said, you can go pick one of their templates. If you only have photos in there, you might be able to post it, but how much engagement are you going to get? Mm-hmm. Videos attract clients. The thing, the thing that people, like I'm, I'm thinking about what you're saying with like bridal show and how do you get people there. The thing with this audience the thing I said about people wanting to do research before they commit to something, mm-hmm. it's almost the like, well, who's all there uh, experience where, yeah. like, and this is, a, this is a common phenomenon. We were already doing it when I was in college. We would literally, are we going to go to this bar or this bar? We would literally look up both bars and we would check what their Instagram story was doing to see, are there people there or not? You want to know how something's going to feel in terms of how you experience it before you go. And the movement in video is like really key. And so the still photos after the fact, it it like, it doesn't grab people to be like, what's that gonna feel like when I'm there? What's it gonna feel like when I'm Ron's client? What's it gonna feel like at that bridal show? What's it gonna feel like when I hire that person to do my photo shoot? One of mine is a magazine and Ron's got a couple copies over here. and, And I did 45 days out, just the magazine itself, 45 days out was the bridal show. 45 days of who's going to be there. Who's all there? Happen, <laughs> yeah. You know, and then I would take a post, like if Ryan was doing something or Dale or whatever. If there was something and the comments started rolling in, then I would throw money at it. Because mm. And boost the post. It was yeah. part of my advertising package that I was going to spend X amount of dollars on social media. And whoever's posts were creating enough buzz, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I would throw more money at it. Yeah. And, Smart. and that's where it was coming in as, as attendance. Like yep. I saw such and such, and I got my tickets for yep. one, or, yep. mm-hmm. you know, Dale told me there was a show, or we came to see good stuff over here. It was just, you know, all of that. And that's where, I, you know, when you say look at where it's coming from and mm-hmm. what's happening, that's what it is. Yeah. There is no more yellow pages. Nope. There's no more yellow pages. Facebook is the yellow pages. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I agree. You, you will be found <laughs> on the social <laughs> medias like, you know. more than anything else moving on from 2024 right. forward. This is what she said to me. She said, Ron, I don't care how good you are. I don't care how good your work is. If you're not on the social media, you will not even be seen on their radar. And I don't want to be 65 years old wondering where all of these other people are trying to get my business going or keep it going kind of thing. If we don't pivot and stay relevant, that, that next photographer that, you know, that's just coming up, they're going to be the ones that are part of that social media. They're going to gravitate to the ones that are 
I had a bride not hire me because my social media was not enough followers. Was that? I heard it afterwards. I heard it afterwards. And I, again, OG old school, I'm like, is my quality good? Is my, is the, you know, the, the creativity is good? It wasn't relevant to that bride. She wanted somebody that was gonna post her images. More people are gonna see somebody with more followers, so I get it. I wasn't offended at it at all. Um, that might not have been the kind of client I wanted yeah. anyways, but, <laughs> but, but, it, but put it this way, put it this way. If you have a dress, yes sir. Okay, um, when you have a dress and you're trying to sell dresses and you're trying to sell photo booths and you're trying to, everything we're trying to do, I don't wanna be beat out by somebody that has you know 15,000 followers more than me even though I've been doing it for 17 years. If you don't stay relevant, you're going to be bypassed. That's just scary to me. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing with like weddings now, like my mentality is like I shot the wedding, and I'm like, all right, you know, you'll get your film in two to three months. Mm -hmm. For them, they're just like, where is it? Yeah, yeah. like what? But, you know, <laughs> they can't understand. Well, no, they can't. Passing day, it loses the momentum of the excitement. Yeah. That's, Good point. That's the part where I need to be more, you know, having that small content to sprinkle in. Good point. Day, be, Leading up to the delivery because I can't, you know, see you in yeah. three months. Yeah, but, you know, it's yeah, that's adjusting and pivoting right there. Yeah, he just saw the need of the missing link between the bride that's going to get a beautiful mm -hmm. finished film at the end in three months, but he's giving her a little bit something along the way to kind of keep that that yeah. attention going. That's smart. That's smart. I usually do a sneak peek of one of their formal pictures of the bride and groom sunset or shower the, the rain or something like that the next day and they wake up they wake up and say oh my god Ron, that's amazing i was like oh i'm so glad you like it here's my review please review my business if you are not asking for reviews shame on you ask for reviews ask for reviews i said the second i say here oh my god Ron, that's amazing great here's my review and nine times out of ten they'll go straight to it <laughs> most one percent two percent will wait till they get the final product which I understand completely, and then they'll give me that five-star review, and it's just good from there. So, like a hard thing to answer, though. I so I think for every brand, right, you need to identify what those are for your brand. Are you talking about from a wedding? Yeah. Okay. But even even then, right? Like there are different vendors who are prioritizing different things, and so like depending on, I know what they are for Lucky Share. I am really big on the candid capture and people having a good time because that is what draws people in. That is the benefit of the service I'm offering. And so if I don't leave without at least like, I'm going to be honest, 50 really solid clips of bride laughing, bride having fun. Like I might as well have just not bothered. It doesn't matter how many details I got, right? The, the focus of my brand is on the candid capture. But if I'm a wedding planner and I'm like, man, like those details are popping, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm spending hours mm -hmm. on details. And so I think when I say curate your shot list before you go into whatever content capture it is, I think for any of your companies, businesses, brands, you can almost formulate like these are the five must have shots for my day. I could imagine for you, it's wedding planner, looking important, doing important shit, right? It's like, because again, what does the client want to see? They want to see how that planner is engaging during the day. There's this big question right now of like, what do I need a planner for? I can do it all myself on wedding talk. And like, who's running around with the clipboard and moving chairs day of, right? That's like a must have, right? And so maybe those are, that's top of your list. It's probably details. And then it's probably how our clients experiencing that service. Just off the top of my head for wedding planning, I could imagine that would be key. If you're a florist, it's probably something totally different, right? There's this idea I can DIY my own florals, LOL, right? Like maybe load in is really important to show. Is that helpful? And we could we could talk. My DMs are open. Yeah, the please DMs reach out. are open. What please I want you guys to do out. is definitely make oh. sure that you follow the Instagrams, follow each other, get some cards, network, follow each other, let's build from within kind of thing like that. Her website will be up there. My website's on there. Follow us on a social. 
I asked, I think I asked you already, but why the lucky share? Where did that name come from? That's so funny. So I said, you're Irish, right? She goes, nope. No, I am. I am. Yes. You I'm, just a little I'm bit. I'm a little Irish. So, um, the, the reason I started my business, I was getting tired of my corporate job and I was at my friend's wedding and she realized she was not, she was uh, getting married in Cabo and their media vendors are on Mexico time. And so her videos were gonna take, I think eight months and her photos were gonna take six months and there were no sneaks. And she did not read her contracts, realized that the night before in tears is like, Liz, I know you're good with the phone. I was always the friend out at dinner that was like getting the good shots. And so um, literally on the plane ride home, I'm like, I'm starting this business. I love that so much. What am I gonna call it? And I remembered this moment um, at the wedding where I was like, I just feel so lucky to have shared this with like all these people that I love. And I was like, lucky, like I'm a little half Irish. Why do I like this? Oh, it's because my big Italian family sharing, like, why does this matter? And it all just felt right. So lucky share was born. Thank you guys. Seriously. Is there anything else you want to no, say? Thank you guys thank so you much. Guys so I, hope, much. I, don't, I don't say I'm a social media expert. I'm not even a video expert. I'm like a nothing expert. But what I do know, what I do know is that you absolutely need social media to be relevant. Yeah. Yeah. I know that there's a ton of really awesome wedding vendors that are starting to feel kind of left behind. And that truly hurts my soul because you're all masters of your craft. You're excellent at what you do. You deserve to have people see your work. Mm -hmm. And so what I do know is that I am here to try to help facilitate mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and bridge that gap. That's it. My DMs are open. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Ron has a door prize. All right. So what we have here is a... Thank you guys. Umbrella. Oh, door prize. Door prize time. <laughs> for Canvas. It is breweries, Nantucket, something like that. Um, it is not, it's an outside one. There's no stand for it. There's no base for it, but everything else is there for it. So here's what we're going to do. I was going to do it an old fashioned Lisa way, but we're just going to do it like this. You guys ready for this? And it is something else, man. Steve Grindle. Look you at never that. Know what <laughs> and he's probably the guy that doesn't even need it. <laughs> it's yours, my friend. Thank you guys for coming.